Hello my darlings, it's Zui here, and today we're reading another Bakugo story. I wrote this one in an hour and a half, and for that it's kind of short, so I'm kind of embarrassed about that. But anyways, I hope you still enjoy it. But before we dive right into it, I would like to remind you to watch the video until the end, like or dislike, and uh, write me a comment down below. Uh, this comment can contain anything, maybe your favorite part of the video. Who cares? Just comment something below. This is the best way how you can indirectly support me. If you want to support me more directly, well, you can check out my Patreon and my merch store. Please buy something or donate something. And, uh, yeah, please do that because I... I please feed my gacha addiction. I, I really want Kiki. Alright? Just, just give me Kiki. Please. I mean, look, I even brought back the cute animal picture of the day. Hope you find it cute. Just so you help me out. Come on, help a guy out. Also, if you're new here and you consider subscribing because you think I'm worth it, hey, why not hit the bell icon as well? Please enjoy the show. It has been a few months of agonizing studies. You used to be motivated, sure, but now, after what happened at the training camp, you're forced to live in dorms. Your father had a very specific way of getting lessons into your skull. And that was through reverse psychology. Were you embarrassed that such a cheap tactic worked on you? Yes. Were you angry at him for doing it? Hell no. After all, it was the only thing that actually got you to do your homework and studies. Sure, you could call him just so you could make him shout at you, but it just wasn't the same. And you needed help, since you were quickly falling behind. While well, sure, you could do some cram sessions with Momo's learning group, it once again wasn't the same. While Momo was arguably a great teacher, the distractions coming from Mina and Kaminari were simply too much. Plus, Momo wasn't... dominant enough to get into your head. No, you needed someone assertive. With heavy lidded eyes, you stared at a chemistry worksheet while lying on the comfy sofa in the dorm's common room. Outside, heavy rain pitter-pattered against the windows. Rain always made you so sleepy. You suppressed a heavy yawn. Your vision starting to become blurry. If it weren't for the importance of this, you would take a nap. The gears in your head began to turn. No, this could not be happening. You would man up and do it. Ten minutes later, your own snoring awoke you. And water began filling your eyes. Why were you like this? With a gloomy expression, you raised your body before rubbing your hands in your face. You needed to wake up. Preferably yesterday. Your stomach turned as you gazed back at the chemistry sheet. I hate you. You mumbled. How was that? You had a few meters behind you. That was Bakugo's voice. After a moment of silence, heavy stomps approached you. Oh, hey Bakugo. You muttered, suddenly feeling very intimidated. His heavy hands crashed behind you on the sofa. And why do you hate me, idiot? He growled into your neck. Slowly you turned your head to look at him. The blonde's cheeks were red from anger, and his crimson eyes were focused on yours. I wasn't talking to you, you whimpered. I was talking to the... Chemistry homework. He blinked. The crap is easy, he barked. Yeah, easy when you have a normal attention span. 
and discipline. Maybe. You gulp down a sigh as you comb through your hair in thought. Well, you were already talking to the closest thing you a has to a school bully, who, unlike Monomoa, you could actually take serious as a threat. So you might as well try. Hey, uh, Katsuki? You asked. Can you help me with... this? He sighed, but it sounded more like a growl. With three heavy footsteps, he sat down to your opposite. What do you need help with? He sounded more annoyed than willing, but you also knew that he was the closest thing to your father as he could be. Honestly, you felt stupid for not realizing it sooner. With an embarrassed chuckle, you handed him the sheet. Well, it's... everything. Bakugo closed his eyes for a moment. He genuinely seemed like he was about to blow a fuse. We talked about this in class so many times, you got to be kidding me. Do you not listen? I do. You try to defend yourself. It's just as soon as I'm out of the building, any uh, amount of learning fails. He sighed heavily. And for a moment, he looked outside the large window right to your sofa. After he didn't reply, you opened your stupid trap once again. Are you thinking of helping me, or are you thinking of an insult for lazy old me? Slowly, his head turned towards you. I'm not here to baby you extras. This was the first time him calling you an extra stung, and you could feel your lips quiver. You were breaking out in full-blown sobs. I'm sorry, Bakugo, I just can't learn on my own. I, I need help, but I'm too much of a sarcastic idiot to follow through. I, I need discipline, I know. Please, you're the only guy in our class or the school, for that matter, with the personality I need to properly learn. I mean, seriously, where do I find a guy with the balls to call me useless? Then I will never get it. Idiot, extra, pathetic, worthless, to motivate me, just to prove them wrong. He blinked, taken aback by your outburst. And why was it turning him on ever so slightly? You sank back into the softness of the sofa, and a grin appeared on his face. <laughs> so is that what you want? He chuckled. You crossed your arms and looked away with a pout. What do you mean? You want someone to insult you while you learn for motivation. You blushed. It's not like that. He laughed loudly. Holy crap, and I thought you idiots are at least somewhat normal. <laughs> you hissed before looking at him. One of our classmates is literally a humanoid bird. One of my mother's co-workers is a sentient pumpkin. We are at the school to become superheroes. We were attacked by supervillains multiple times that call themselves the League of Villains. I mean, that's like calling myself the super good superhero. Have you looked outside? This world isn't normal. He grinned. <laughs> Almost spoken like a true villain, eh? Again you pounded at him. I'm not the bad guy, I'm just... lazy. P please, just... just help me for God's sake. He rubbed his eyes, seemingly in thought. I don't want to waste my time with idiots. You shrugged. See, that's what I mean. His brows furrowed. What are you talking about? Your heart began to pound as your emotions began to boil. Now you made me want to learn so I can prove to you I'm worth your time. And effort. Bakugo blinked. He was about to break out in laughter again. If he was a little more honest with himself, he would call you cute right now. However, at the same time, Katsuki understood that that might 
be exactly what you didn't need to hear. At least not yet. With an amused grin, he crossed his arms. Alright, I bite. But I also want something in return. Your eyes met his, and you blushed ever so slightly. The other idiots in our class will most definitely want to join our little, uh, cram sessions. Should they find out you are actually improving from them. So? You asked with intrigue. I'm not planning on wasting my time. So how about this? I'll only help you if we disguise our little learn group as dates. You blushed, taken aback by his words. <sighs> what do you say? Bakugo asked with a toothy grin, and you blushed ever so slightly harder. I never had a boyfriend before. You squeaked. I... Didn't say it'd be your boyfriend. Your heart pounded. All I said is that I help you with your stupid homework. Why did this sound like a challenge? Wait. Was this part of his game? You felt excitement fill your entire being. If this worked out, this will not only help you in the long run, you might actually get him permanently to push you forward even after school had ended. With a cheeky grin, you looked straight at his face. Sure thing, Bakugo. But if we really... You put extra emphasis on your next word. Pretend. You chuckled. <laughs> Then we need lovey-dovey nicknames for each other to make it more believable. Now it was his turn to blush. Fine, he barked. If someone else was here, they would have noticed the tension rising up inside the both of you. Despite your lack of initial attraction towards him, you now wanted him. While he was just looking for an excuse to not talk to your other classmates. In addition, he liked shouting at you. And so the mind games between the two of you begun.